minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Man has charted the stars, leapt into the cosmic unknown that cradles our Earth. Centuries of questioning propelled mankind towards deep exploration. We have seen its skies, touched its heavens. But our gaze has shifted, and now we look to another world, beyond the known and into a desolate desert of night, or perhaps not so desolate as we once thought. The deep sea is the last great unknown wilderness left. This is the first cradle of civilization, from single-celled organisms to complex beings. On a grander scale, collectively the oceans have fostered life for over 4 billion years. 71% of the Earth is inhabited by the oceans, and yet only 5% has been thoroughly explored. Oceans help shape planet Earth, everything from controlling climate regulation, creating a sustainable food source, contributing to nutrient recycling, and providing us with more than half the oxygen we breathe. To this day, we are still heavily reliant on its offerings. In this series, we will focus on a small section of the map and hone in on the rich Caribbean territory. Exploration of this particular deep began a century ago, led by European scientists in the early 1800s. It remained undisturbed till now. We are very excited because we will be collaborating from now on with a lot of global scientists, many of whom are interested in our sensitive environments which have been discovered off the east coast of Trinidad and Tobago as well as off of Kikam Jenny and other areas in the Caribbean. The EV Nautilus is a ship that is very well equipped. It's got high-tech equipment to map the seafloor. I personally pushed for an invitation for them to come to Trinidad and Tobago. This in order to sustain the ecosystem, resources, all those valuable components which we derive from the deep sea environment. The EV Nautilus was built by the Ocean Exploration Trust which was founded in 2008 by Dr. Robert Ballard, best known for his discovery of RMS Titanic's final resting place. He's also one of National Geographic's explorers in residence. The Caribbean is a, a very special to us for many reasons. That's our, where our ship is registered. The EV Nautilus is registered in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, so, which I've been to. I've been to uh, a, a lot of, of the islands in the, in the Caribbean. Plus, I've been studying it for a long time. My first time in the Caribbean was actually in my first cruise as a chief scientist. And that was off of uh, the Cayman Islands and Jamaica. So that was special. I, I will always go back whenever I can. In 2013, during its windward passage, the ship focused its attention on the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea Connect. While the 2014 season included dives focusing on the famous Kikam Jenny submarine volcano off the coast of Grenada, the journey then concluded off the east coast of Trinidad and Tobago, studying the mud volcanoes deep within the surface. Here, where life is sculpted by extreme and hostile conditions, the core of our Earth formed through submarine volcanoes. So there's always fun when you go to where no one has gone before and you find something you didn't know was there. And that's when it's really exciting. A lot of our Caribbean nationals aren't even aware about the importance of the deep sea environment. In the Caribbean environment, we found lots of marine communities existing, and that means, therefore, we have been able to record greater biodiversity for Trinidad and Tobago. This means that we are adding to the scientific information, and this is why we felt this project was a good idea to engage the younger generation, to engage all who are interested in this area, and to educate our population. It was only the second time in our history that such an in-depth exploration took place off our shores. What it revealed was a vast abundance of exotic forms living off chemicals being released from the seafloor. 
when the Nautilus first arrived in Grenada, I was absolutely amazed because uh, Dr. Robert Ballard was one of my heroes and suddenly here he is in a little island in the Caribbean and we all know about Kikim Jenny and we can't travel our boats through that area but to actually see it underwater uh, you know and watch all the creatures and they actually found creatures that they hadn't found anywhere else so you know this was an amazing thing for me and guess what it's in our backyard. We must be aware that we need to conserve we need to regulate what is taking place in our deep sea environment. This in order to maintain or to sustain the populations, the ecosystem, resources, all those valuable components which we derive from the deep sea environment. The Caribbean, this diverse colony of coral atolls, provides a new destination for true explorers, an area beyond prior jurisdiction Aided by the technology of the Nautilus, we now have the capabilities to finally explore the secrets of the deep. The deep sea is tied into the food web of the ocean in so many different ways and in ways that we're just starting to understand. So to see human activity taking place in the deep ocean before we even understand what's happening down there is uh, frightening. Um, it's something that we need to understand all of these connections so that we can understand if you affect one thing, it's going to have an impact throughout the ecosystem, all the way to the surface and in human communities. In this five-part series, we'll explore the deep sea environment and illuminate the depths while revealing the resilience of marine life. We'll journey to the ecosystems off Trinidad and Tobago's east coast, as well as to the renowned Kikim Jenny undersea volcano in Grenada. And we'll showcase the many careers in deep sea exploration. It's time to marvel at the deep sea wonders of the Caribbean. Our expeditions into the uh, Caribbean, particularly in the area where we were, is really just the beginning. There is more unexplored than explored. Think of the earth as a living creature. And that's what we're studying. We're studying a thing we live on that's actually alive. And your job is to figure out how to live in harmony with it. Life blooms in the darkest of places, in the deepest parts of the earth, the ocean wild. Jules Verne once wrote, who can fathom the depths of the abyss apart from Captain Nemo and I? Now with modern technology, we can. Time to dive and discover the ocean galaxies resting just below the thunder of the upper deep.